Hi, Steffi Funk here, and welcome to this week's episode of Urban Shamanism, where I give you the sacred energy strategies for an extraordinary life in the concrete jungle. And I'm not currently wearing any pants. It's true, guys, that is one of the benefits of running and owning a virtual business. And um, the reason for that is, is I am indulging in one of my self-care surrender experiments right now and that is to get my daily dose of sun. So to back up a little bit, um, for those of you who follow me on social, it will be no surprise to you to know that I've recently gone through something of a breakdown. It was like sort of like a meltdown. It was like a case of extreme burnout, and it was really hard to confront as somebody who puts out regular content on how to live an extraordinary life, right? Because I was feeling like shit. And so there was a few things in that for me that felt really important. One is I had three choices. I could either hide it, like show up on my regular social channels and just, you know, fake it, fake the funk. Um, I could ignore it, meaning like I could just not show up at all and just move through my process in isolation and then come through the other side and get back on when I was feeling good again. Or I could share it. And one of the things that I've learned is that how we be most extraordinary in the world is when we authentically share our imperfection and our vulnerability. Because the truth is we don't grow through, we don't grow despite our humanity, we grow right through it. Like the pathway to ascension is through our humanity, right through it. It's not like spiritually bypassing our way around it, all love and light. There is as much importance in being with and looking at at our shadow as there is at looking at the light. So if anybody you follow looks 100% happy all the time, that's to me a red flag because that's just not human. And we signed up for the human experience. We signed up for all of it. And all of it is truly divine. And we're able to embrace our divine selves when we actually fully surrender to and yes, embrace what we would call our shadow sides. So this was really important for me to move through, right? And the fact is, is I will move through it again. So what has been downloaded to me is that ascension is an upward spiral. So it looks something like this, but notice that every time you are on the spiral, you're sort of hitting some of the same themes over and over just at different octaves, right? So the breakdown that I just went through was a result, like a, like I said, of extreme burnout. It was a result of compromising my own integrity, saying yes when I meant no, uh, just a number of things, which is very old paradigm for me because I'm a recovering perfectionist. So I come from a very ego masculine, I've got to do it. If I don't do it, it won't get done sort of background. So when I fall short of filling up my own cup, it's very easy for me to go back to those old patterns. Now, I'm not going all the way back because like, think about it. I get to have sort of a meltdown in the context and the container of my very divine feminine business, right? But how ironic, right? To be running a divine feminine business and to be experiencing that old paradigm masculine meltdown. And as I always say in divine purpose work, that which we move through is actually not just for us, but it's also for our healer healed agreements. It's for those whom we serve. So I get to move through this because it's important for me to share it because it serves as processing information for the whole, especially for the people in my community who can relate to coming from this sort of ego masculine you know, chaotic background of I've got to do it. I have to do it all alone. There's nobody else to do it into this more divine feminine receptive way of being. It's sort of like cosmic poetry. It's perfect. Um, That doesn't make it easy, right? So um, the truth is, is I still fall prey to to those things because I'm still human, right? And the work is really never done. When it's done, we're, we're off in another dimension. And we're getting there, we're moving there, we're moving towards 5D reality and we're still in 3D. And so it's completely normal and okay for our humanity to show up. And not only is it normal and okay, there's nothing wrong with the shadow. And like the moment I could finally get into a space of like feeling shitty and knowing like it was for me, 
and that like I could sort of almost make friends with the shittiness. It wasn't like I could be at peace, but I could be, and it wasn't even that I could be at peace with the chaos, but I could be at peace with the fact that I couldn't be at peace with the chaos. So I, you know, it took a minute to get there and it's beautiful because as a result of it, I was so broken down for lack of a better word that like something had to change right and we've got to have some of that like tension to have the impetus to to create change if everything is okay like we're just like surviving it's fine there's really nothing that catalyzes the spark of change so I got so on my knees that I had to do something different So I embarked what I'm calling my self-care experiment. And what it is, is I I showed you guys this list before. It's this list of things that I do every day, first and foremost, and at any cost. Meaning, these things come before everything else. They come before socializing. They come before working. They come before... um, I don't know, anything else that, that would be something that could take my attention and energy. So effectively, my self-care comes first. Once I've got these things checked off, like I'm good for the day. Anything else I did in that day is gravy. And it turns out self-care is something of a full-time job. And I'm learning to really love this job. And so it was something of a, an, a surrender experiment, right? Because, I mean, I don't know, does self-care pay the bills, right? Like, how is this actually going to turn into anything? But I knew I needed to do it. Well, within the week of putting my self-care first, and this is really basic stuff, right? Like, I'm doing breath work every day. I'm meditating every day. Um, I'm connecting with spirit every day. I'm moving my body every day. I am limiting my phone. So I'm only checking it morning and night. I've moved a lot of my social apps off the home screen. So I have to like go in and look at them. Um, So if I'm not as active commenting on your stuff right now, that's why. Um, I have committed to just the bare minimum for work. I've cleared my calendar. Um, I'm not you know, drinking, I'm um, drinking tons of water. I'm um, also drinking electrolyte water because here in Nicaragua, it's very hot. So I sweat a lot. So I've been losing a lot of electrolytes and minerals, which are so important for my brain. Um, I've been making sure to be around water to get in the sun and to sleep well, to eat whole foods and to connect with like, you know, to connect with really good friends. Like the socializing for me right now is more than I want to do, but just, you know, to really like be heart to heart with people and with my partner feels really important. And I'm putting asking for help at the top of my list. Um, and then I'm allowing myself to like be bored and read a ton and watch Netflix and, you know, take my vitamins and minerals. And so all of this takes time, right? And I used to put it at the bottom of my list because I had so many other things to do. I'm in service to the world, I've got big things to do. And so they just started like bit by bit falling to the bottom of the list and I could no longer serve from my empty cup. So here I am filling up my cup and with a lot of curiosity around like, well, what does this lead to when this is my full-time job and everything else comes second? That doesn't mean I don't work, it's just that this is first and everything else is secondary. Well. What's happened for me in the course of just a week is like nothing short of miraculous. Um, first of all, I feel good. <laughs> so there's that. If nothing else, like, and really, what else is there, right? Um, I feel good. And um, my partner just said to me, Christian just said to me, like, yeah, and feeling good feels good. And I'm like, well, there's a mic drop moment. So there's that. Um, but then also what I'm starting to call into my space from this place of being really boundaried about what works for me and what doesn't, because a lot, another piece of this was I started, I said no to all projects basically. And the projects that I am taking on have to, the, I've noticed that I have, and you guys probably have this too, like, um, almost like a, a pendulum inside my body where when something feels expansive, I sort of open up like a rose And when something feels not good for me, I feel kind of hollowed out or empty, um, almost like contracted like a tight bud. So I've really been using that 
now this whole week to like make all my choices about what projects I'm taking on and things like that. And I've said no to some really fabulous projects. But what's happened is the ones that are actually coming through for me are like my dream projects, right? Like they are like ev everything I've ever wanted in like all the ways I want it. And so, um, you know, even in the context of some of the work that I was already doing, it's now up leveled to be something that's even so much more sustainable and so much more nourishing and so much more connected and so much more functional. It just works, right? It wasn't working the way I was doing it. And so, so far, the net net of my self care experiment is it's a success. And so, your weekly inner shaman practice is for you to try it. What can you do for yourself that you can put first and above all in your day, in your timeline? Can you take some time to go offline? Um, last week, I actually took a couple of days where I completely just went away by myself, and it was incredible. Um, so is that something that you can do? Can you make a list of sort of non-negotiables where you come first and um, not, you know, nothing else matters until you matter, right? And then what you're going to find, I think, what has been true for me is that I can show up more powerfully for my projects and for my community and for my loved ones when I'm taken care of. So it's actually the least selfish thing we can do. So I would love to hear from you. What can you put into place as your non-negotiable self-care surrender experiment? And let me know how that goes for you over the next week. And thank you for giving me the space to be all of myself with you all the time. Thank you for those of you who encouraged me and held me through it and reminded me that the breakthrough is on, always on the other side of the breakdown. And um, thank you for showing up as your authentic selves in the world as well and for being all of who you are, even when it's not what you would consider perfect. That's what allows us to relate to you, love you, feel you the most. And so I just really appreciate and celebrate who you are, who all of us are. Here is to our humanity being the path to our divinity. I'll see you soon.